Today is Matot. Is it? I don't know. Yes. Where is Pinky? Let me see. Maybe in the rest. Could be. Mato. 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 So, 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 the first one is the room is what the Chalotama is what. Matam. Shabal no say to have only traced to look at the three young. ניס שנעשה בשלל שנלקח במלחמה, הטעם שרצו אנשי המלחמה להקריב קורבנות להשם. Pinkle. You got nether. It's a nether. Yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, the beginning of the parsha, which I don't think we're going to go into. It's got something to do with all kinds of vows that people make, you know. Yeah. But um, the uh, second portion of this parsha talks about the the war that the uh, Israelites had against the Midianites. Right, yes. who had enticed the Jewish people uh, and caused them to stray after the Avodah Zarah. Uh, Pinky, is this week's parsha Matot, Matot Mas A, or just Matot? I think it's Matot, matot alone. Yes. I think it's just Matot. You think it's Matot alone? Okay. Um, there's a war that takes place between. Uh, the Jewish people who are commanded to go out and seek uh, vengeance or uh, punish the Midianite nation who had enticed the Jewish people away from God to idol worship. Benot, right? Right? Benot Midian. So they're going out to fight against Midian. So the Ramban has two discussions about that. One, if you remember, they, they went out to war and with a few people, and they went out to war, and they came back after conquering the nation there. They brought back all kinds of things with them, uh, and, including women. and including people, including people who were captured. And, and Moshe becomes angry at them. What are you doing bringing back people, especially the women? They're the ones who enticed you in the first place to go after the gods. What are you doing, right? So there's a whole discussion there about that. One of the topics that the Ramban discusses is some kind of miracle that happens with the shalal, with the, with the booty that they brought in the war. I don't know anything about it. That's in one page. Then the other is the people who had fought in the war decided once they distributed all the spoils between the people and themselves, they wanted to bring a sacrifice. They wanted to bring something to God from what they brought. What is the reason for that? Those are the two topics that he has there. That's in order to Mas make, he has another make kosher this thing? That they no, brought. not kosher, just to offer. There is a discussion about how to kosher things in this parsha from those things which they brought, but that's not the topic he's talking about. They wanted to bring an offering to God, to, to, to the Mishkan right. from it. Um, so does either of those or both, they're both on the same page so they cannot be gigantic. It's nothing uh, about uh, matters, being truthful. Being truthful. Truthful, yes. meaning to fulfilling what you say, yeah. what you promise to do. Kol kol shei, yes, 
call mm-hmm. a share you motzi sfat shem or something like that. Yeah, no, no, but no. but that's not truthful. That's keeping your word. Right. Right. Keep truthful means to say the truth, not to lie. But you mean to say. If you say I'm going to do something, that's the neder. That's the issue of the mm-hmm. nedarim. I mean, you mean to that? Uh, he does not discuss that as one of the main topics. He has a uh, the, the root for a difference between nedarim and shvuot with regard to mitzvot, and um, and then he says the reason of a husband has something of responsibility for his wife's nidarim, his wife's vows. Those are the two topics he has there. It doesn't have, I don't know, four topics in the whole Pasha. Can I ask you a question, though, yes, without the Ramban? No, why, why does God feel that they should fight against the Midianites? He says, he says the words. I'm asking why he does it. Uh, what are the words? The words are um, right after Nadarim. Vaydare Hashem and Oshale more. Nikom Nikmat Bnei Israel, chapter 27. Um, I'm sorry, 31. I don't know why they have different kind of prints. 31, uh, first verse. See it? 31. Nikom Nikmat, read it in English. You got 31? Yes, sir. The beginning of 31. Go ahead. Hashem spoke to Moses saying, Take the vengeance for the children of Israel against the Midianites. Afterward, you, you will be gathered unto your people. Yeah, this is the last thing you're going to do, Moshe. You're going to die after you do that. Okay? It's time to take care of this one last job you have. One last job you have, and then you will be departing. God says to him, but to Moshe. But vengeance belongs to Hashem. Who? Hashem said. You, oh, so what is the what is the point? I'm, I'm asking the question. Just to, to, We're reading the text, mm-hmm. right? Go and take the vengeance for, for Bnei Israel from the Midianites, and then you will end your life. Go ahead. Fight a bear, Moshe. And God said, Moshe, God, Moshe said. Moses spoke to the people saying, Are men from among yourself for, for the legions that they may be against Midian to inflict Hashem vengeance against Midian? A thousand from a tribe, a thousand from, from a tribe. 12,000 people, then all together, right? And except maybe Levi didn't go, but okay, go ahead. For all the tribes of Israel shall you send to the legion. What do you say? Repeat a thousand from, from Don't know. Time. Don't know. Go ahead. So there were delivered from the thousand of children of Israel, a thousand from each tribe, 12,000 army for the legion. Right. Moses sent them a thousand from each tribe for, for the legion, them and Phineas, son of Elazar the Cohen, to the legion and the sacred vessels and the trumpets for sounding in his hand. They massed against Midian, as Hashem had commanded Moses. And they kill every male. Okay, now hold on a second. What is the reason for this? Uh, well, what, what are the, uh, what the, what the, what the uh, relationship between the Jews and the Midianites? What has been the relationship between the Jews and the Midianites until now? Um, there's, one, there's one person from Midian that we know, and that's Yitro. Right? Yes. Uh, Yitro was a friend to the Jewish people, right? He's the father-in-law of Moshe. Then there's another thing that we know about the Midianites is that last week's Parsha, the week before, actually, last week, um, the Midianite women went out and enticed the Jewish people, and, uh, and the Jewish people, men, went the, after them and worshipped their gods. Well, that's pretty left, serious. Left that's God, pretty, right? That's pretty serious. That is pretty yes. serious. Who's the criminal? The one. No, who is the, yeah? I think he recommended that. Yeah, who is the, who is the criminal? Bilam. Bilam. Bilam, yeah. Bilam, Bilam it, it concocted this scheme of enticing the men. Who is the, the criminal? The only who is the criminal? He is. That's not a crime to entice people, not as severe. Who is the criminal? Who, who actually committed a crime? Oh. 
who acted criminally, who did a criminal act. Pinchas is not there. didn't. Pinchas killed the person who was yeah. uh, doing this, uh, this, this abuse right in public. Cosby? But, if you, if you I mean, he, it. Our, let's say like this. A woman is standing in the street. She's very, very, has a lot of makeup on, and she looks very yeah. attractive, and she has a very short skirt, right? And she shows off her wares, and she says, come with me. Eliyahu, come with me. I can give you a good time. It's not nice. She's, she's enticing you. Eliyahu, not Eliyahu, but some guy decides, I'm not going to go with her because I am loyal to my people and to my wife and to my values and to my Torah, right? So he doesn't go. Someone else decides, yeah, I think I'll go. I'm going to have a good time, right? She takes them into the house and they have a good time. And then there's a cross there and she says, why don't you uh, also bow to the cross? I mean, why don't you bow also I, to this I thing? Think and they do. I think you have it backwards. I, I, I Which think backwards? I think she said that uh, before we... Uh, oh, okay, fine. The Medra <laughs> says. The Medra says. We don't know anything from the Torah. The Medra says, first, before you come and have a good time with yeah, me, I want you to, to bow worship. down to this, uh, to this God of mine. Yes. So this guy, some people say, no, I'm loyal to my God. I can't. Uh, so he runs away. Other people say, okay, I'll do that because I want to sleep with you. Right? Now, who's the criminal? But the question is, these guys it's not simple. worship the, the, the cross or whatever. Uh, who is the criminal? Who is the criminal? For, for to to get good time. Yeah. Who is the so who is the criminal? I can't find anything. Who is the bad guy? There's no bad guy here. What are you? Is it Jewish man? Really or is but I have to ask these people if if he. He, he got a, a good time with the lady if he worshiped really the cross or whatever. Well, in order to get good times, you know. Yeah. So is he? Is who is the criminal? I'm just asking. She Let's is. say he did that. He did that. In yes. The way, answer is he did. In this yes. Way? Well, okay. Uh, this guy. She is. The guy is the criminal. She is the criminal. Yeah. No. For enticing him. No. He's he's her job. Well, why not? FBI agents go out all the time, yeah, yeah. and they suspect that somebody might be sympathetic to terrorists, yeah. and they and they pose as a person who has interest in terrorism, and they say, you know, I saw you going into the mosque, and you know, I'm I'm representing Al Qaeda here, and I would love it if you join us, and I will give you money, and uh, here's some bombs that you can put in the Statue of Liberty, right? That FBI agent does that in order to find out if this person is susceptible to do terrorism. The average guy would say, what, are you crazy? I'm not interested in that, right? But some people who are sympathetic to this idea do it. Now, when they, when they are caught, mm -hmm. they're caught and they're brought to trial, they say, what do you want from me? He, the FBI agent, enticed me. Mm -hmm. Is that a good excuse? I don't think so. Is that sufficient? Um, I don't understand. I don't understand the vengeance here. The Am Israel came from Har Sinai. They have Moshe as their leader. They stand in front of Moab. Hashem changes the curse of uh, Bilam into 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 blessings. They don't even know about this, by the way. They probably don't know. They haven't no. been told until mm -hmm. later in in, uh, in Devarim, maybe, and maybe they do know. I don't know. They get the man every morning to give them food. They have water traveling with them, and the uh, yeah, right. And Hashem does all kinds of miracles with them, and the, and, he, and the Anana Kavod is on top of the of the Mishkan as they travel. So some beautiful women come and say, "You want to come with us? You bow down to these idols first. They give them food, they get them drunk. So that's not very nice, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. but the biggest criminal is the Jewish people who went after them. And as a matter of fact, Hashem creates a plague, and many people died of the Jews because of their own criminal action. Now, to say to the Jewish people, go out and do vengeance against those women who, that the whole nation, not just the women, that whole nation that sent out those women to entice you successfully 
because you were stupid and you were criminal and you were terrible, go out and do vengeance against them and kill every male in the nation because of, and, and the women who had known men, right, later on, because of what? Because they enticed you. Could you explain that to me? Um, very difficult. What's the idea? There are a lot of enticements in this world. All the time. So are all the enticers the guilty ones, the guilty party? Don't go after your eyes and after your heart and after your desires. Do, do what Hashem tells you. And now you are going to go and punish Midian for enticing you to do the terrible thing that you did? I, I think it's chutzpah. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to... to, to, to now, Moshe, by the way, in telling the people that we're going to go to war, does not say to them. And I think that's why. He changes the words. Hashem says, go out and do vengeance for, for Am Yisrael, for what they did. Moshe says, get an army together because we're going to do a vengeance for God, for what they did. For God, not for the people. Right? I think it's possible that Moshe sees that what happened here was that they enticed him because they wanted to draw the people away from God, right? And we're going to punish them for trying to get them away from God. He's not doing vengeance for the people of Israel who should have listened, who shouldn't have listened to them. So, I mean, why should we do vengeance? Hashem is interesting. Hashem is interesting. Hashem says we're going to do vengeance for the Jews because some of them died and some of them were led to sin. Moshe says do vengeance for God for what the Midianites did, to try to draw you away from him. Um, I don't know. I've got, I've got trouble with it, with the topic. Well, that was a question that I, was interesting to me, but the Ramban does not deal with it, I want to tell you. As if one had wronged God. Say that again. I'm sorry. Words a little louder. Rashi says, Take vengeance, take vengeance, take vengeance to the children of Israel. God spoke of avenging the harm that had been done to Israel. To them, to them. And Moshe. But in the next verse, when Moshe conveyed the commandment to the Jews, he spoke only of avenging the slight to God's honor. Yes. What well, he said, Had we been idolaters, they would not hate or persecute us. They are enemies of God. That's therefore, what they are. Therefore, they, the vengeance is for God. for God. Right. In other words, if we were just some other nations worshiping idols, they wouldn't have gone after us, right? They, go, they went after us to entice us only because they wanted to insult God, to get us away from Hashem. And therefore, it is the honor of God that's at stake. That's what Moshe said, right? I mean... Okay, but it begs the question. I still don't understand the question, the, 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 the mission. Mm -hmm. Now, so they bring bound booty, and in Shin Chavtet of the Ramban, he talks about the booty that they brought, the, the spoils that they brought. Um, and what? Pasuk? Pasuk Lamed Vav. Pasuk Lamed Vav, very short. Oh, there was, a, there was a bunch of stuff that they brought, right? And the Torah tells uh, how, how you should divide up. Let's say they brought a million dollars of worth of booty, for, of, of spoils from the war. So how are you going to divide it up? Some of them should go to the army because they risked their lives. I mean, they were the ones who fought. Only 12,000 people, right? And there's 600,000 people more. Should the army take it all? No. Should the people take some? You know, it was taxes to the to the to the government to the to the everyone, yeah. everyone the same? You think, mm -hmm. even those people who went out to fight, everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. so that so the Torah tells the people, yeah. here's what you do: half of them goes to the army, and half of it goes to all the people to share. Half to the army, because I suppose because they're the ones who risked their lives and went and got it, so they did the job. Everybody else who sent them gets a half of it. I mean, apparently. Right? And so the, the, the people that was left, they were praying 
Vashem too. I suppose, yeah, they were doing something. Yeah. But they were rooting, they were doing rah, rah, ha, hooray, hooray. They were giving parades. I mean, I suppose they were praying for them, like we say, to and, uh, and Shul, uh, to the two for them. And, we are and praying. other people are praying. Okay. Yeah? So, so here the Ramban says in verse 36 of chapter 31 in the Ramban. One second here. Hutzracha katuv the farait azeh shiaskir. Wait, 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 Where are we? Verse 31, 36, I'm sorry. Verse 36 in chapter 31. Shin chaf tet. Yeah, 36 in, 20, in 31. Verse 36. Chapter 36. Chapter 31. Oh. No, no, no. The same chapter we were in, just verse 36. Yeah, so we're close to the end of the chapter. 36, you see? So the Ramban says, it was the, and it was half, half, half that went to, to the share of the army, right? So he says, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you understand. I mean, he's, he's trying to tell you that he told you at first that they brought, let's say they brought uh, 14,000 uh, sheep when they brought them into the camp, right? Mm -hmm. And then he tells them, okay, this is how you're going to divide it. You keep half and give half to the people. And then the Torah tells them, and so they gave 7,000 to the army and 7,000 to the people. Mm -hmm. That's arithmetic. Right. It's very simple, right? Mm -hmm. Why does the Torah tell you what half of 14 is? Everybody knows what half of 14 is. Why do you have to tell us? So the Ramban is trying to tell you, you know what? It took time from the time they brought the sheep in, right? And they gathered the people. And Moshe gives them a command. Here's how you divide it. You count out 7,000 for this one and 7,000 for the people, right? And then at the end, they counted them. And the miracle is that between the time that they did the war and brought it till the time that they actually divided it and gave it, no sheep died. And no sheep was born. I guess, mm -hmm. I guess. Or unless you want to say the equal died. amount died, <laughs> an equal <laughs> amount died, <laughs> amount, <laughs> amount lived. But there's no difference in the number. That is unusual, he says. Yeah, if you have a whole multitude of tremendous number, then you know, there's changes that happen between, right? So he's saying it was a miraculous event. I mean, uh, um, um, in Bamidbar Beit Daled, the Ramban said something else like that. He says, trying to say that in the Ramban in Bamidbar, the second chapter. I remember something like this before, that that the, there were two different counts of the people, and it was exactly the same before as after. Where is it? In Bamidbar Beit of, of the Ramban, the second chapter, chapter two, chapter two. Uh, which one? Uh, Dalid, verse 4. It's Fatam Seventy-four thousand. Right. 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 Right? First, the people are counted in the beginning of Bamidbar. Then, after a while, the time passes and Hashem commands them to make the digalim, the, the flags. Remember the matot, how, how they arrange themselves around the Mishkan and they were counted. And He gives the number again. He gives the number again. There were 7,422 here and, uh, you know, each tribe. I'm just making up the numbers, right? It so happens that it was exactly the same number at the time of the arrangement of the tribes around the Mishkan as the one that was counted earlier. When they first came to Midbar Sinai and they were leaving Har Sinai, they were counted. And we have a number, each tribe, number, 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 number. 22,000 here, 27,000 here, 42,000 there, right? Mm -hmm. 
Then some time passes, mm -hmm. and Hashem tells Moshe, you know what? Arrange them in flags around uh, tribes around the Mishkan. And then the Torah tells you, so they took Yehuda, and they put him over here. And how many were there? 24,000, whatever it is, right? But they didn't count them. It's just the Torah is telling you there were 24,000 that were here. Now that's a miraculous thing, but between the time that they were counted and the time that they were organized around the Mishkan, nobody died. There was no difference in the number. Are we in Arvot Moab? No, this is before Arvot Moab. This is in Bamid, the early Bamidbar, when they're leaving Har Sinai. Oh. 20 days passed between leaving Har Sinai when they were counted to start going, and 20 days later, they arranged it, they arranged them around the Mishkans. So in those 20 days, exactly the same number. Now I guess, in my lifetime, 22 days ago, I'm still here, right? But that's a miracle, right? I mean, that's very nice. But if you take a million people, and you watch them for 22 days, usually there's somebody <laughs> somewhere, right? Somebody gets into a car accident, somebody drowns in the lake, Somebody takes an overdose of heroin, two people are born, somebody gets sick. I mean, all kinds of things happen in a huge number of people. Here it happens that it was exactly the same number 22 days before and 22 days after. So the Ramban points out that it wasn't a count here, it's just that the Torah is telling you that. Shaloya yamu techad mikol ha'am So that's why we're, that's why the footnote pointed us here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So also the booty, the fact that the Torah tells you exactly the number of sheep that were taken all together, and then it tells you after a while when they divided it that the exact number of sheep was half of this and half of that, which equals 50% of the original number, he says that's a miracle. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to say that the Torah talks in approximations, then you wouldn't get excited about it. But he says it's, it's meant to say that there was some kind of miracle here. Why should there be a miracle about such a thing? I don't know. Is it? I mean, God doesn't make miracles for nothing. Well, what would you? I mean, let's say I was tell you two different possibilities. You brought 14,000 sheep, and Moshe tells you divide it in half. And over the next two, three weeks, you divide it in half. And it turns out that you have now 13,942. And you divide it in half. So that would be less of a miracle. I mean, what, what, what uh, importance is there for God to make it that each one of the sheep should not die at this point? For this kind of, I mean, it's not a very uh, critical moment when this division is made, is it? I mean... Think it doesn't matter? Uh, not particularly. I wouldn't think. But he points that out that the number is repeated. The, why does the Torah have to tell? His question is why does the Torah have to tell you what the half was? We know what the half is of a number. It's not teaching us arithmetic, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. the point. That's the point that he's bringing up, right? Right? By Yechatziu, Atiya Machtid, da da da, 36. First, he tells you how much they brought, uh, right? Uh, do they tell you the number first? Uh, first, count all the material, and so they did. And. Uh, and you should take 50% for the people. And what they brought was such and such. Yeah, so they tell you how much there was. You know, there were 72,000 bakar, you know, cattle, and there were donkeys which were uh, 61,000, and people which were such and such, and the half that went to the people of the army was such and such, half. You know what I mean? And so the, the Gemara, so, so the Ramban asks, why do we have to spell that out if we know what half is? You could have said, and they took half. Okay. I don't know what else to make of this. I mean, And then he says, 
if we want to look into Pasuk Mem Tet 46 of that, uh, Mem 49, 49, Mem Tet 49, it says, Vayomru el Moshe. So the people, the army people, come to Moshe. They say uh, the, 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 the one before, one verse before that. The what happened? Of the thousands in the legion, the officer of the thousand of the officers of the hundreds, approaches Moses. Then they say to Moses, your servants counted the men of war under our command, and not a man of us was missing. Right? That's an, that's an amazing battle, right? There's always, very often, some soldiers get killed, right? Here, they had a, they had a battle with the whole nation of Midian, not one missing. They came back. So, mm -hmm. what yeah. happened? Vanna yeah. crave? So we have brought an offering for Hashem, what any man found of gold vessels, unclip and bracelet, rings, earrings, and clasps to atone for our souls before Hashem. And Moshe takes it. Now this is very interesting. Okay, this is very interesting. Among the things that is counted here is gold things, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of gold things? What did they say? They Every, want to give it to God. What did they say? Every fashioned vessel. Every what? Fashioned. 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 Yeah. That means an artisan's made it. Yeah. Go ahead. All the gold that was raised up. The gold that was was raised up. Which they set apart for, for Hashem. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about, the, look back in Pasuk Nun 50, the one that you just read. So and we, we want to bring to God Hashem, what, each man. What any man found of gold, gold vessel, vessels. Yes. Anklet, anklets. 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 Who wears anklets? Who, who wears anklets? Ankle, uh, golden anklets. Who wears that? Like, like women. Women. Yeah. Right? Women's yeah. jewelry. Yeah. Women's jewelry. Anklets, tamid bracelets, yeah. right? Ring. Rings. Earring. Agil earring. And clasp. Now, do you know what a kumaz is? No. What's a kumaz? Earring. No, no, no. no. That's agil. <coughs> kumaz is a golden um, uh, covering to the genitals. Oh, yeah. a, a loin cover. But that was taken from Egypt. From the no, no, no. Well, that is another time. That is another time when Moshe didn't want to take it from the women who yeah. brought it for the Mishkan. Made, We're talking yeah. about the Midianite women now. They just came back from battle. Yeah. The mm -hmm. people went to the Midianites. They killed the Midianites. Mm -hmm. They had a battle. They took a lot of things back home. And now they distributed. Cattle, people, da da da, da right? Among them, they took chastity from the place belt. chastity belts of gold. Of gold, yeah. right? And bracelets and necklaces and earrings and necklaces, right? Yeah. Of the women, women are the ones who have that. And they brought it and they want to bring it as an offering to God. Yeah. Right? And Moshe takes it. Yeah. You are reminded, he's a Tamit Chacham, so he remembers that there were women, women who wanted to bring to the Mishkan when Hashem asked for a truma and gifts to the Mishkan to create the Mishkan. So there were women who brought Kumaz, the same kind of coin cloth. Where'd they get it? Either it was their own, mm -hmm. or it was among those things that they borrowed from the Egyptians, remember, back home, whatever. But it was a sexual object, right? So Moshe looks at that and he says, you want to bring, that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing that you bring into the Mishkan? This is not right, right? Yeah. So Hashem comes to him and he says, you don't understand these women, right? These women are special, da 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 da, -da for, for various reasons. I want you to take it from them, right? Because they are holy women who brought this from Mishkan. L'shem Shamayim, because they're swearing off these things or because whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? These are the women who were able to entice their husbands back in Mitzrayim. That's why the Jewish people are here. Right? He tells them, you take it from them. Now comes an army who fought against the Midianites and takes the Midianite loin cloth or chastity belts, right? of the women who might have been among those who enticed the Jewish people, right? Yeah. And they're bringing this and they say, we want to offer this to God. Yeah. So they is this... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're not around anymore. They killed them, yeah. But, sure, of course. But these are, the, these are the objects that these women had worn. Yeah. 
and I want to bring them to God. So the army is bringing them. The army, the army is bringing. Of course, I'm not me. The army is bringing them to God. So now Moshe says, and Moshe took, right? So is this uh, fit? I mean, before he objected to Jewish women who wanted to give the kumas that they took from the Egyptians, and they wanted to bring a truma. Now the army is bringing booty. And God said at that time... Uh, to, about those women. Don't mess with those women. I want you to accept it. Uh, uh, they, implying that generally speaking, that. we don't take that kind of stuff. You're right, Moshe, yeah. to, to sneer at it, but yeah. you don't understand these women. They're special, right? So something has to be... The kumas, kumas. As soon as you hear the word, you have to associate those two things. So the Ramban is going to discuss that. But what is going right on Right now, it's, it's the contrary. Because there was the, the thing that... Entice. These were the things that enticed them, right? So is that the kind of thing that you bring to the Mishkan? Now you want to say what? That these kumazim are special or that these soldiers are very special, like the women who brought the offering to the Truma? What's, what's happening? So maybe you would say something. But here, so the Ramban discusses that, right? Hatam shiratsu anshea milchama lakriv korbanot lashem. Oh, I'm sorry. Neis uh, shenasa... Oh, no, that's the line of Memtet. So Memtet. The verse... 58. No, 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 no. It's 49. 49. Yeah. Did I say something else? Sorry. 49. So he says, Lay more. Hine Hashem Asa Hashem did a great miracle for us that he did not even one person died in the war. That we are commanding, right? And there, nobody was hit by the sword that would be eliminated from the army. Therefore, we want to bring an offering to God who saved us. We want to give a ransom for our life, so to speak. Like, we want to give a value of our life, as though we could have been lost. Hashem saved us, so we owe him uh, some kind of value for our life, right? Asher padami mavet, that he redeemed us from death. V'ravotenu darshu, our sages studied and said the following, lo nifkad mimenu ish, what we mean, what they meant to say, lo nifkad mimenu ish, doesn't mean that not one was killed by the sword, but not one went astray. Mm. See, we had 12,000 people, all of them motivated by this zeal to do Hashem's vengeance, and not one person deviated from that commitment mm -hmm. that would be missing from the 12,000 committed people, mm -hmm. right? Not even one went after sin. Right? Because after all, they were jumping right into the same people, remember, who were so enticing for them before, right? And some people might want to have a good time while they're at it, and some people might want to leave the army and join these people, and some people want to who, just, just steal things and not kill and not do the army, uh, whatever. Not one person did that, right? Lomar, she yu b'chol eit v'yadeinu v'lo nifkad neshu ish me'acheinu asher b'tzava El makom acher la'avor avera. Not one person deviated from his command to be among us together in the army to do some sin. Ve'amar l'Hashem Moshe im kain korban ze lama. If this is the case that nobody was enticed and somebody can, nobody was led astray, so why do you want to bring an offering to God? Well, if you I want to, what? if you want to bring an offering to God because nobody died, that means you want to. You want to show that you owe God for something. He saved you, so you want to bring something, right? But if you're the one who decided not to be going astray, then why do you want to bring that offering? You should be rewarded. Hashem should be smiling at you, right? Mm -hmm. What's the idea? Amrulo lechapera nafshotenu mi hirhur halev. We want to. We want to atone for our souls that we. Desire. Had thoughts. We had thoughts. Mm -hmm. We had thoughts. Now, it's an amazing medrash, right? It's an amazing medrash. And now you are connecting this to the nashim who brought the truma of the kumas. Uh -huh. You understand the analogy now. Yeah. What are they trying to say? We went to war against the Midianites, and those were the same people who enticed us before. 
right? This enticed our people for it. Very powerful enticements, right? We went to fight, 12,000 people, and every single one came back pure, did not sin. So why do you want to bring an offering? So you don't understand. We went and we were tempted. Mm -hmm. we, it wasn't so simple. We were, we were tempted. We were tempted. And we were watching these, the, the same beautiful, enticing culture that we had seen before we went and saw, right? And we, and we were not unaffected by it. We, were, we allowed ourselves, at least in our minds, to be tempted. Mm -hmm. But we, we fought against it. And thank God we were able to overcome our temptation. And we want to thank God for that, that we, and we want to atone. We were sinning in our minds mm -hmm. at, at first, mm -hmm. until we fought against it. We want to bring something to God to atone for, at least for even the temptation that we felt. Mm -hmm. right? Now Moshe says, okay, that's a good korban, including the kumas, right? In other words, you're taking the kumas that was the thing that, atone, that tempted you, and you, are, you want to melt it, and you want to bring it to God, and you want to get rid of it, you want to destroy it, you want to bring it as, a, as an offering to atone for your sin. This now we understand a little bit is similar to the women who brought the kumas and Moshe said, what kind of thing is that? And God says, no, you don't understand these women. These are Mosirat Nefesh and they're the ones who, you, who did the mitzvah with this and they're the ones who, who or, or they're, some people have different ideas about what those women are. Some people say that they were women who became uh, like ascetics. They are going to leave their husbands. They're going to be the ones near the Mishkan from now on. They're going to be what are you talking about? total back then when back they then. brought the Truma. The, the Nashim Hatsov Ot. Do you remember the different conversations about who they were? What they were? Like some people say it's Nashim Hatsov Ot. They came to the Mishkan and they decided because they had seen Hashem speak to them and before Har Sinai, they saw the Egel, they saw the Tshuva that the people did, they are going to be like uh, nuns. They're not going to be with husbands anymore. They, want, they were the women who were going to sit around the Mishkan from then on studying and seeing Tehillim. And that's going to be their life. They were giving up this Kumaz as a symbol of them giving up their sexual lives. I mean, that's a pretty radical medrash because most people say that that's an Avera, right? I mean, what do you do? Hashem doesn't want you to be a Nazir. Hashem doesn't want you to be an ascetic. Mm -hmm. But that's one interpretation of who those women were and why Hashem told him, these are exceptional, take them. You know what I mean? That would be a little bit like these people who were atoning for their temptation even then brought them back. Um... Because according to the first opinion, that they were only coming because they were saved from battles, death, from injuries. So they want to bring a korban. That's very nice. But bring a kumaz? Yes. That would be a little... A little yeah. So, by the way, there's a whole discussion. There's a long discussion in the Gemara about uh, things which are despicable. If you melt them, and you make gold. I mean, gold from a jewelry, and gold from a ring, and gold from uh, from I don't know my my wife's things, or and gold from a sexual object. Once you melt it, it looks like gold. It's all gold, right? So if you make a brick of gold out of it, can't you bring it to Mishkan as a brick of gold once it's no longer that object? Like the gold the Philistines made in order to get a ton for for the sins when they capture the. The aroma, yeah, yeah. the aroma, yeah, okay. Because these, once you have gold, once you have gold, if you melt it down, is it, does it lose the connection to the sinful thing? It's just gold now, right? It's a, you can make coins out of gold. You can make a, a Shabbos candle holder out of gold. You can make a, a menorah out of gold. Can you take a menorah, can you take gold from a kumaz, melt it down, and once it's melted, it's like all the other gold, when you make a, you know, you can make a, you know, Pass a, it for a fire, fire to purify it. Yeah. Objects. So, you know, does, when does something lose its orig origin entirely? Because we say, by the way, lo titain etznan zona vikelev lebet mikdashin, or something like that, mikdashin. So there, there's a prohibition against taking money that's paid 
from a prostitute, from her, let's say as a prostitute who, who makes money selling herself, right? And she wants to bring a maaser from her money to the, to the Mishkan stone, or to the Beit HaMikdash. So in other words, she wants to, she wants to use her own ill-gotten gains as a religious contribution, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or a mafioso who steals money, extorts money and sells drugs, and then he says, I want to bring 10% of what I make because I want to be bring good feeling. So the Torah says not to accept it. Not to accept it, right? Because that gives them, I suppose, a feeling of satisfaction that they are well. accepted. Yeah, God is pleased with them. So mm -hmm. keep making more money and bring in, a, you know, you know we're, we're happy. And we'll make a plaque on the shul for you, contributed by... Alfonso, you know, <laughs> for 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 a uh, for Beit Midrash, you know, in the name of this mafia leader, you know, people do that, right? So we're not supposed to do that. Wrong. So to the to the temple. Yes, to the temple, or to a shul, or to a shul, or to a, or to a yeshiva, or. Well, I hear that yeah. some of the rabbi, the rabbis in Brooklyn accept oh. some kind of this money, and right. he spend the money on the. Toilet paper. Oh, okay. oh well, <laughs> <laughs> I could take it for the toilet paper, not for not for the shoe. Yeah. I see, I see. All right, so that's an excuse. I mean, the idea is they're not supposed to do it. How are we doing with time? I just don't know. Uh, it's eight oh eight. Seven more minutes. So, so here it seems like anyway, without discussing the legality of it, this is kumaz that is brought by the army, who themselves are not. The criminals, right? They are not the criminals. They want to. So either they want to thank God for saving their lives, or they want to atone for sin of the spirit of, saving, the, of the mind, saving their souls, temptation, saving their souls, saving their souls. Yeah. Interesting. He doesn't bring. He doesn't bring the comparison to the women of the Kumas. That's very interesting, right? Yeah, he, we Rabbi need to atone. That, 96. Yeah, it's true. He doesn't mention the kumas of the women because it's obvious. I mean, he, Eliel, immediately heard those words and he said, oh, that's like those women who brought in kumas. Very good. Association, yeah. I mean, uh, so it automatically makes you think. Is there a connection? The words are the same? What's going on? It's a good point. It's a good point. But the second portion of the Raman fits a little better with the spirituality of the of the Kumaz women. There, the women were bringing it. Yes. Here, Here it's the men. Right. Yeah, it's very different, right? I mean, if you use the second Medrash about them becoming ascetics, right? So they're giving up this sexual object of theirs in order to live a different kind of life completely, then... You know, they're they're bringing it as an atonement. I don't know, uh, swearing off these things. But the other one is that Moshe just is told by God, "You don't understand. This uh, private parts are the very things that they entice the Jewish people to have babies." Back in Mitzrayim, the men were so demoralized that they would never even think of, uh, you know, making love with their wives after being whipped and uh, humiliated. They were able to flirt with them with their beauty, right, and with their enticement and with food and wine and whatever they were able to get to get them to be in the mood, right? Mm -hmm. And that was gigantic, you know. They deserve great credit, so don't refuse them this offering. Why, why would they be? It was for the Kiyor. The Kiyor. Oh, uh, good, yes. I think was, why would they be giving it up now? I mean, to be, was it, was it the only Kumas According to the first Midrash, it's what they had. I mean, you know, men have uh, property. Women have the jewelry that the men gave them. I mean, we're talking about a society, right? So women, women, when they were motivated to bring things to the Mishkan, what could they bring? Right? They don't have sheep because the husband has the sheep. They don't have a cow because the husband has the cow. So what do they have? They have earrings. They have chastity belts and they have anklets and they have um, necklaces and they want to give everything they have. I mean, they want to give it to God, right? So they give it, all, everything they could. 
people brought too much even. After a while, you know, the enthusiasm was but so great have. that Hashem said to they Moshe, have. Moshe sent him said that the word, don't bring anymore. Only one chance to be built. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's made of gold. I suppose you don't have too many of those. But you don't. You don't have to launder uh, chastity belts every day in the laundry, like we have different, uh, you know, briefs. But uh, but a chastity belt made of gold, I suppose you have one. But Jewish women didn't use because the command was to to procreate. Oh yeah, but you use the chastity belt during the day until you go to bed at night. Or, I suppose you don't have it all the time. Right. If you're with your husband, you take it off. <laughs> You wear just the belt even with your husband? Okay. I don't find any, any, any reason to wear them wear these kind of things. Well, it protects you, it keeps you separate from all other people. It, uh, Maybe it's the other man? Yeah. Like wearing a skirt. So the question is, okay, to the cover, to cover you. people in, in, Par- in Parsha, Pinchas and before, uh, the men went to the Moabites. Yes. What about the women, the Jewish women? The women didn't sin. The women didn't sin then, the women did not sin at the Egel, and the women did not sin at the Meraglim. The women were always the best. There's no indication that the women sinned to the Meraglim. It says Ish. Every man sat and cried and complained and so on. At the Eagle yeah, also, at the, the, Eagle that, also the women my, did not. My, the women my, did not. The men were going to go out to war. Why, why the they are special. This, this well, well, modesty. I mean, I don't know. It's a good question. It's a good question why the analogy of the Kumas between these people and those women. Good. I don't know. It's a puzzle. So a lot of things in this part are very difficult. And continue to share your uh, quick associations with great things that you remember. I mean, two with us always. <laughs> See, I have a. This is the first time I remember to give you the blessing first. Yeah. You're always the one who gives us blessings. Very good. Got you. <laughs>